Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 18th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Mariester, Florida. This weekend, Didier took a closer look at how newer versions of Microsoft Office are dealing with files inside of uh, ISOs. Now, ISO files are treated pretty much like a physical CD or DVD. You may uh, mount it uh, as a drive. And then, of course, in the past, the problem was if you downloaded uh, this ISO file from the internet. Whenever you download a file from the internet, an alternative data stream is added in Windows that contains what's often referred to as the mark of the web and that tells software like Microsoft Office that this particular file should be treated with caution. Now, the problem in the past was is that the ISO file, it may contain this mark of the web, but any files inside the ISO did not contain the mark. Well, that behavior now luckily has changed. DDA took a look at it, and uh, it does appear that if you are now opening a document from inside an ISO file that you downloaded from the internet, all the restrictions are applied that would be applied if uh, this particular file would have been downloaded directly and not inside an ISO. Now on Twitter, there were actually some interesting comments about this when it comes to zip files. Similar problem with zip files. You download the zip file. The zip file now has the mark of the web, but if you're extracting files from the zip file, they may not. And it depends apparently on the software that you're using uh, to do the extraction. It if you're using, for example, something like WinRAR, apparently it's not applied. But if you're using just uh, the uh, opening a compressed folder in Windows itself, then the mark of the web is applied to any files that you are extracting. So definitely something that does deserve some attention uh, to really figure out when you're getting the warning that something is downloaded from the internet and when you're not getting that warning. And it's not just a warning, but also, for example, whether or not macros uh, are executable at all or whether you are able to enable them at all. Well, if you are using Heroku uh, dashboard or Travis CI as part of your continuous integration, uh, continuous deployment uh, tool chains, you probably want to double check uh, whether or not your uh, GitHub tokens that you may have uh, deposited uh, with these applications were leaked. Apparently, GitHub itself noticed how uh, one of its private repositories was accessed and then an AWS key that was stored inside that private repository was later abused. And that apparently happened uh, to other users of Heroku and Travis as well. It does not appear to be a bug or a vulnerability on the GitHub end, but more likely on Heroku's or Travis CI's end. But overall, there isn't sort of really a good uh, root cause uh, that I see identified in the blog post that GitHub published. So double check if you're using uh, these applications, how uh, these keys were used, if you see any uh, abnormal patterns and probably best just to reissue the keys uh, for again, Heroku Dashboard and Travis CI. All of this started to develop early last week. I'll link in the show notes to the GitHub blog post and maybe by the time you're listening to this, uh, there will be additional details. Last week, uh, GitHub also patched what looks like unrelated vulnerabilities in the Git for Windows implementation. Now, this only is an issue if you have multiple developers sharing one workstation, which I don't think is that terribly likely, but the vulnerability essentially means if you have a .git directory in a higher directory, like in your uh, C uh, drive, in your root directory there, uh, it may be used instead of the local.git directory. And with this, of course, one developer could create a .git directory that would affect how, for example, another developer's code is being committed. 
And if you're using a Cisco wireless LAN controller, well, you may want to update them because there is a vulnerability that was addressed late last week with a CBSS score of a perfect 10. However, the vulnerability only affects you if you're using a non-standard configuration, in particular, if for the Mac filter radius compatibility mode, you're selecting other. But if you are affected, then an attacker will be able to craft a password to bypass authentication. And please refer to Cisco's advisory for a list of products that are affected. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.